Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that can earn 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a savings account. A high yield, low effort way to grow your money with no fees. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone to start earning and growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. Are you ready to move your career forward? Make your comeback with Purdue Global and get college credit for your work, school, life, or military experiences. With these credits, you may have already completed up to 75% of your undergraduate degree. You've worked hard to get where you are. It's time to get the recognition you deserve and earn a degree you'll be proud of, one that employers will trust and respect. When you take the next step in your life and career, make it count with Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu. Hello! From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about trendsetters, women whose vision, style, and willingness to break barriers changed culture, from what we wear to how we behave. Today, we're talking about the original Hostess with the Mostess. This woman wrote the book on throwing parties, raising the bar for high society fun on both sides of the Atlantic. And she did it all from humble beginnings. At least, that's the story she stuck to. Please meet Elsa Maxwell. A great hostess has great party stories. For Elsa, her own birth was a go-to. She was born on May 24, 1883, in a private box in the Keokuk Opera House during the climactic aria of Mignon. Well, that was what she amused people with anyway. Elsa was born on May 24, just two years earlier in 1881. And she was born in Keokuk, Iowa, just in her grandmother's house on North 4th Street, rather than the local opera house. Later on, Elsa would tout her birthplace of Keokuk as a symbol of her simple origins. It wasn't exactly a lie, but right after she was christened, her family moved back to their large house in San Francisco, where Elsa did all her growing up in the upper middle class. Still, in Elsa's own retelling of her childhood, Her modest upbringing inspired her glamorous life. She was turned away from a party when she was just 12 years old because her parents were too poor. After that, she swore she'd give great parties all over the world and invite everyone to attend, except for the rich, who would only be invited if they had something more important than money to bring with them. In her mid-twenties, Elsa was living a fairly plain existence, playing piano and selling music in New York City. In 1910, she found her first foray into society. She joined forces with a young woman, a Vanderbilt by marriage, who needed to fundraise for her women's club. Elsa used her musical chops to whip together a short opera for the show. It was fairly unremarkable, except for the fact that it introduced Elsa to the high society women she'd eventually rub shoulders with nightly. Elsa wasn't particularly beautiful, or wealthy, or socially prominent. She hadn't married rich. In fact, she hadn't married at all. She wasn't a spectacular piano player or singer or actress. What Elsa was, was fun. The best parties are given by people who can't afford them, she once wrote. The glimmer of an original idea can make an evening more successful than a lavish dinner in a well-stocked bar. Elsa's parties were just that, original. She always had a trick up her sleeve. She popularized the scavenger hunt and the murder mystery party. She commandeered friends' homes to turn them into playhouse destinations. Barnyards, casinos, places where the upper crust could play pretend for a night. When advising others on hosting, she begged them. If they were going to throw in the towel and throw a dinner party anyways, at least serve the courses backwards. Do anything, but at least do something weird, she said. Over the course of the next few decades, you'd be hard-pressed to find a party Elsa wasn't invited to. She worked her way up the social ladder, collecting contacts and locales from her last soiree to plan her next one. Her guest lists were expansive, connecting the rich but boring with the interesting yet penniless. She held her guests to just two qualifications. First, that she knew and liked the person. And second, that they had something to contribute to the party. Elsa was an extremely public figure. 
but she kept her cards close to her chest. Nobody ever knew quite how she made her money, how she gathered the capital to throw the parties she did or what she did at home out of the spotlight of her parties. She denied she ever gained money from her events. Her longtime partner, Dorothy Fellows Gordon, or Dickie for short, was born into a well-to-do English family and might have supported them both. Dickie and Elsa lived together for many years. The exact nature of their relationship was another secret Elsa kept out of the tabloids. Elsa kept spirits up through both world wars, the depression, and the changing tides of fashion for more than three decades. She wrote a guide on how to host parties and a truthful-ish autobiography of her life called RSVP. Elsa enjoyed putting herself at the crossroads of culture, claiming credit for popularizing Monaco as a vacation destination, and even touting herself as a matchmaker to the stars. By the 1960s, Elsa had begun to slow down. She attended her last party in April of 1963 in a wheelchair. That November, she died at the age of 80, well, 82. Elsa never married. Her life, she used to say, belonged to her many friends. The world is my husband, she wrote. I married the world. All month, we're talking about trendsetters. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Evidence-wise, we have virtually no evidence. In 1995, Detective Tony Richardson was trying to figure out who killed a fellow officer. The case comes down to who is believed and who is ignored. Oh my goodness, we did convict an innocent man. I'm Beth Shelburne from Lava for Good Podcasts. This is Ear Witness. Listen to Ear Witness on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the pop culture we loved as teens hits differently in retrospect. Maybe it's a tabloid story we couldn't get enough of or an illicit student-teacher relationship on our favorite show. We're Susie Banacarum and Jessica Bennett, hosts of the new podcast, In Retrospect. Where each week we'll revisit a cultural moment from the past that shaped us, and probably you, to try to understand what it taught us about the world and our place in it. You're the first person that I've talked to about this for years and years. Listen to In Retrospect on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. Harper Wilde is creating a more comfortable world for womankind. Starting with the world's most comfortable bras and underwear which are tested by real people with real bodies who say things like, it feels like clouds are holding up my ladies or the holy grail of bras. And you'll have to pry these bras out of my cold dead hands. That comfortable. Get $15 off your order with code comfy at harperwild.com. That's code comfy at harperwild.com.